I know what you're thinking. That sounds horrible. It does. This all happened a while ago, but I figured I should make a video of it since it's pretty interesting. After taking a two hour drive home and parking the car, the next morning when we started up I noticed it sounded like a diesel. I figured I was just hearing stuff and maybe nothing was wrong. That was until someone else said, why does it sound like a diesel? That right there confirmed that there was something wrong. That's when I took the valve cover off and made sure one of the rockers or lifters hadn't broken or fallen off or something. Cause to me it didn't sound like rod knock, it sounded like lifter tick. And so I'll just show this video now. Okay, again. One more time. All right. Now from what I saw there, there was nothing wrong. The lifters were pumping up and oiling the rockers correctly, and I didn't hear or see anything suspicious. So I took the lifters, rockers, and cam caps off to make sure they're all in working order. All of them seemed fine. The lifters were pumped up, bearings and the rockers were fine, cam caps looked fine. So after cleaning up a little, I put them back in to see if, if cleaning them would make a difference. To me that sounded much worse. At this point I decided I should leave the car alone for a while since I was busy moving and didn't have much time to figure out the real issue. In the meantime, the junkyard was having a half off everything sale so when I got me another 2.4 liter turbo engine of another PT Cruiser because I could surely use it for something else or for parts. And just so everyone knows, you can have a PT Cruiser engine in about 35 minutes if you want. Now what really sucks is because I was moving, I had to constantly use my car to help move everything. Well on one of those trips we had to use the PT to at least get it to the new house. I guess that's when the PT had enough. It died mid-drive it wouldn't start, it just cranked. Plus with further inspection it looks like something catastrophic had happened. I figured broken camshaft or drop valve and you'll see why. With it closed and then I'll open it. Okay. Fire! That was fire! <laughs> now what that told me is the valves are stuck open or the engine is out of time. We got the PT towed back to my new house and started to tear it down, but with a deadline. It was one week until the KCI Cruise Car Show, we were determined to get it done and enter it in. Yeah, no bueno. Hmm. 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 So, trying to move this one. Not going anywhere. Try to move this one. I think something's wrong. Oh boy, is that is that the guide pin just spinning around in a circle with it? That's legit. Focus! Whatever. You can kind of see it. 
As you can see, the guide pin on the camshaft sheared right off, allowing the cam gear to rotate separately from the camshaft. I was told this can be caused from not tightening the cam bolt down enough, letting the gear walk back and forth, which would explain the tick from earlier, but oddly I torqued that bolt down to spec with Loctite. What I didn't record is me stealing the exhaust camshaft off the spare engine I brought from the junkyard, just to see if I get it running by throwing it in. Okay, so I got the PT Cruiser together, enough to run it. I already ran it for about 5 seconds with uh, no oil on it, because you know, obviously no oil, 5 seconds. Um, I currently have no water passages open, like basically just the, there's no coolant in the motor at all. So I just filled it up with the oil I pulled out. I'm going to see if it clicky clackies, because if it clicky clackies, motor's coming out. Or at least that one's... Parts are going to come off that one and go into this one because I'm not sure if it's the head or if it's a uh, rod knock, but I'm sure I'll have this all already in the video. But the reason the car was clacking is because uh, the pin sheared off the cam, causing it to stay open in one position, shoot fireball to intake, yada yada yada. Well, yeah, that sucks. Hopefully, I didn't bend any valves. So let's see if this, how well this works. I'd love it if it didn't clack at all, and I only run it for about like a minute anyway, because obviously there's no um, water in it. <laughs> oh, sounds like a big vacuum leak. That would be the turbo blowing a shit ton of air out. God, this thing's loud. That was all held up with a jack stand. Well, I think it's good. That was a lot of air coming out of the turbo. Oh, Jesus. Um, belt still on the these light belts still on the cams. Cool. I think it's good. Obviously, I don't have the valve cover down tight. This is going to make quite a bit of a mess. Yeah. Smoking. There's a lot of oil on the exhaust. I mean, 
This head looks like nice. God damn. The car ran great. We went out that night and did a couple pulls and it ran fantastic. The tune still needs adjusted, but it's good enough for now. I didn't get to film anything past this point because the next day we woke up very early and spent about three hours detailing the Dakota and the PT for the car show. We got into the show after about three hours of spectating, largely because of a few thousand more people showed up than expected. We had a great time and got to talk to a lot of cool people. Hope you all enjoyed the video and hopefully you look forward to seeing more.